What's up, tubers? Two-year review of my FJ Cruiser. That's right, I've had it for two years. I bought it 2018, March 29th. I paid $26,000 for it. It had roughly 38,000 miles on it. The paint was in horrible shape. It had the brush bar on the front bumper, tail light covers in the rear. It had steps that stuck out way too far that I think the previous owner was using for bash guards for shopping carts. It now has 66,000 miles on it. If you look in the upper right corner, you'll see a link to videos of all the modifications and upgrades that I've done. I think I have a total of around $5,000 in upgrades. Mechanically, I've done nothing but oil changes, filter changes. I'm still on the same wiper blades, but remember, this thing's garage kept. This FJ has never failed me, not even once. Anywhere that I want to go that I can physically get to with the 3 inch lift and 33s, this truck has taken me there. Not even once have I had that experience of, shit, what's that, what's that noise? What's that rattle? What's that coming from? Never has that ever occurred to me. I will put time stamps with the numbers to the individual parts of the review that I'm talking about down below where it says description or show more. So let's get on with this. The elephant in the room. My 2011 FJ Cruiser. All right, so what's the story of this? The original owner of this could not take care of it and give it a proper good home. So what they did was they put it up for adoption. Yep, that's right. I adopted a black truck. Now, when I first bought this, this thing was scratched up as crap. The paint was horrible. I have fixed that. There's a video link up here if you want to see what I did there. But the good thing about a black FJ is they look good in two different ways. One is like now, when it's perfectly clean. Well, it's washed anyways. The other time these things look really good is when they're filthy AF. Other than that, it's just a normal truck. Really clean, really good, really dirty, really good. The other thing I like about the FJ is anything you do to it comes in black. There's no decorating, there's no designing. Sliders, black. Wheels, black. Roof racks, crossbars, black. There's nothing to decorate. And it's kind of got a stealthy look. And when I bought this, I said, okay, I'm gonna keep it stealthy. I do some decals. So I mean, right here, you can see I got my TRD. I've got a, you can barely even see them unless the light hits it just right. I got a TRD sticker up there in black on the black windshield. I've got my, uh, what does that say? I ride Park City, my No Fear. Yeah, it's boomers. If you're a boomer, you know what that is. And being a Japanese truck, I've got some Japanese characters on here. <laughs> characters. I like it dirty. And of course, my Harley sticker. They're all in black. They disappear. They go away. They're not noticeable from across the room or the road until you get up close. Or when I got that Southern Utah Moab sand on here, then those stickers will poke out a little bit more. But that's just me. If 
you're not the type of guy willing to hand wash your vehicle and keep it clean, I would not recommend or advise you to get a black vehicle. The mirrors on here are ridiculous. They are so freaking big. 80% of your wind noise. Get over it, Chuck. And 70% of your front obstruction are from these mirrors. I mean, they just look like big old elephant ears sticking out. One of the things the FJ Cruiser is not fun or good about is canyon carving. That's not what this vehicle is designed or built for. When I want to do canyon carving, honestly, I get in the Porsche and I can do a buck 30 through the turns here with a death grip on the, on the steering wheel. Okay, so when I first got this, my biggest complaint or issue was kind of like the riding position. I felt like I was half my size inside a big truck, the way the seat here kind of sits back and low and down. Uh, I almost felt like a 80 year old man having to look over the dash. There's three adjustments to these cheap ass seats. You got your forward back and forth. There's a lever over here on the side that cranks the rear of it up and down. And then you got your backrest, which goes back and forth like that. Yeah, there's also another little dial that brings the front of the seat up and down. So four positions, adjustable Toyota FJ seats, a piece of crap. Uh, but like everything else in life, you will get used to it. I mean, it's just like that cute little skinny petite girlfriend that you married. And over 30 years, she became a little fat round girl. You get used to it. Okay, the radio in here. I've got the base model. So I've got the CD player, single disc, no subwoofer. The only speakers I've got are the ones that are buried or hidden up there. And the two in the door and the two in the dash. Okay. The, st the stereo speakers on this are really crap. Took them out and replaced them with some Foscates or something, I don't know. Uh, but they didn't really make that much of a difference. For me at my age, I've got tinnitus. My ears are always buzzing. I'm not benefiting from it at my age. If I was young, yeah, I'd be changing all this shit out, adding amps and stuff like that. For the functions and functionality of the radio, uh, it's entry level. It's basic. It's already outdated too. This is a 2011, so it's eight years old. For me, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a boomer, right? I don't need my iPhone apps and all that shit on a big screen there. This thing's got satellite radio. When I first bought this, I'm like, okay, no big deal. I won't use it. Then once I got this and I'm getting a little bit further and further off-road than I could in my BMW. So I'm realizing when I'm that far off the grid, I got no cell service, I got no GPS, I got no radio. So I started looking at the deals for Sirius and I can get $30 for six months, $60 for the year. I still use my iPhone hooked up to it. I still use a couple of CDs that I burned. So, if you're into that CarPlay, Android, all that stuff, and everything, your GPS on there, you're going to want to change this out. All right, as you can see, 
I am still rocking my stock soft plastic bumpers. I am okay with and I'm open to replacing them. But I don't want to do it just for looks. I want to do it because I've ripped these bumpers off on, and left them on a trail. I haven't done that yet. The only scratch I've got right here that was like when the vehicle was stock, stock height, stock tires on a steep trail at Moab. And I bottomed on that. No, no scars, no damage on the front. Until those things come flying off, we're leaving them on. That's just the way Fester operates. Another one of the things that I don't have a problem with, never complained about in here, is the, I guess you'd call it, air conditioning heating system. Uh, never had a problem with it. It warms up fairly quickly, and right now it is 16 degrees. I'm on my way to Salt Lake City. Uh, this thing gets plenty warm inside, doesn't get too hot. It's easy to, to control. Same thing with the air conditioning, but then realize where I live at 7,000 feet in Utah. Uh, don't use air conditioning a whole lot. Usually got the windows down, maybe even the back window popped open. The backup camera on here, even for me, okay boomer, <laughs> is really a piece of shit. The screen here is literally an inch and a half by an inch and a half. It is more than an arm's length away from me. The clarity of it is very low can't make out shit and if there's any bit of dirt dust or whatever on the lens you can't see it anyways so for me it sucks I think for everybody else it sucks too but here's the deal okay boomer right I know how to use my two mirrors there I don't even use this mirror because I can't see out of it because I got double tint on the back window to make it dark 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 Visibility at night. Here's the way I drive this. And I drive it this way basically during the day too. At night. I've got limousine tent, like 3% or 5%, the whatever you can get, uh, on top of the factory window tent. So it's dark, except for the front windows, which are legal Utah bullshit. But... I look at this as if I'm driving a cargo van, a moving van, a panel truck, where in that sense, all I've got is the cab here and there's a wall right here, no rear view mirror, no rear view mirror there that I can see out of. So I've got two mirrors, this window, this window in the front. And from that, I manipulate and look at and find and watch everything that I need to out of here. Just because you've got windows back there, I got news for you. <laughs> They're decoration. Gas mileage, right? Well, if you're one of my privileged followers and you already own one of these, then you already know. Uh, but if you're thinking about getting one, here's the deal. When I bought this, it was completely stock. I got over 20 miles to the gallon. I got up to 21 miles to a gallon when this thing was stuck. Going from the stock tires to the 285s and the lift. Both of those are gonna kill, let's go this way, uh, your gas mileage. I just got back from Moab and on that trip I averaged the last tank which was which was all highway coming back 
15.98, I think, miles to the gallon. Now, I, I don't drive this fast because I've got a fast car at home and I know trying to drive this fast would be like trying to uh, put tits on a bull. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I get up to 16, I can get up to 19. Uh, up to, which means like 18 and a half. Uh, but that's about the best I'm gonna get with a three inch lift and 285s. Okay, so check this out. This is one of the best things about the FJ. No carpet. The only fabric on here is the headliner. And uh, look at this. I mean, that's a WeatherTech floor mat, but under the seats in the back, no carpet. No carpet anywhere. I mean, let's be real for just one minute. Look at this. This isn't a vehicle you want or need carpet in. There's no reason to have carpet in here at all, period. It's an off-road vehicle. It's a toy. It's, it's designed to get dirty. Storage in the FJ is what I would call minimal. With the back seat down, you get more storage. Makes this thing livable for one person, maybe two people. The suicide doors help a lot. I give you access back here but here's what I did I took out the bottom seat cushion and the headrests this will lay flat but not flat with the back but it does give you access to store something on the floor back here without the headrests and I can work with this plus if you've seen any of my other videos you know Normally when I'm camping or traveling, I travel with a roof rack cargo box, an 18 cubic foot cargo box on top. So in combination with that and this, I can deal with it all. In the back behind this back seat, there's four D-ring tie downs, which are good for strapping stuff down to. You've got hooks on the side which the factories are pieces of shit and worthless but if you look at this video link up there I'll show you where I got these nifty hooks that make this stuff back here functional and then you got more D-rings up front to tie down to and then you've also got these uh, where the rear seat attaches to that you can also use as tie down points for a nine year old vehicle with 66,000 miles this, can you hear it? there's really no squeaks or rattles in here short of whatever I've got physically in here that's laying around or rocking and rolling. Now, what kind of a review after two years would it be if I didn't talk about my problems and my issues? This should be brief because there's only one problem. It's not even a problem, let's just call it an issue. So let me show you what it is. Here is my problem, and my problem multiplied by two. Now, 
So this is the rear uh, skid plate. Look at all this mud and shit on top of here. But as you know, if you've ever changed your oil, you've got this inspection plate cover thing here to remove. That bolt there rusted into it or stripped or welded in. I could not get that to remove. And instead of taking two bolts to get to the drain plug, I needed four. One, two, three, four. No big deal. But today when I went to pull this off so we could do this video, yeah, look what happened here. Let me see if I can get this to focus on this right here. That bolt stripped and screwed out too. So I had to drill this, put heat on it, WD-40, liquid wrench, and one of these easy out tools, and I finally got it. Now I'm going to need to get a tap to re-clean those threads and a new bolt. And I still need to get this to come off. I got the uh, bolt on the inspection cover off, but it broke. You can see where the threads broke and where the easy out is sticking through. So that's going to be another pain in the ass, but at least I got these things clear. Okay, that was almost a bitch. Uh, I got everything off. I got all the nuts freed up. I found my uh, uh, M8 by 1.25 tap. I got everything cleaned out. I got everything put back together. I happen to have some uh, M8 bolts to spare. I don't know where they came off of on here and what I've done, but uh, I had them. So I put them on. I consider that maintenance. I don't consider that a problem with the FJ. Uh, my skid plates underneath there, they got, some, they got some damage on them. I have scraped over some rocks and hit some shit with them. And every time you do it, bends it a little bit, kicks it out of Waka. But I think what the problem really is, and you can see it on my garage floor from where I've washed the vehicle, that Moab sand is so fine. I mean, it's seriously, if you've seen my other videos, it's like a talcum powder. And it gets in the threads, no matter how tight and dirty the threads are, it finds its way in there. It finds its way everywhere. Uh, just uh, the beauty of living in Utah, I guess. All right, so that's it for the problems uh, that I can think of right now. And I've thought long and hard. And that's it. All right, let's wrap up this video. It's running a little bit too long already. As you can tell, I do like my FJ. Now there's a difference between love, like, and hate. I don't love this vehicle and I don't hate this, but I do like it. I do enjoy it. Uh, luckily for me, I'm in the position to where, uh, I can afford to buy and drive whatever I want. Uh, I looked at the Forerunners. I didn't like them. Uh, I did not even bother looking at Jeeps. I am a never Jeeper. I feel everybody should be able to buy and drive what they want uh, whenever they want. That being said, I am very interested in the new 20. 21 Bronco and what it's going to have to offer and what its capabilities and modifications and all that stuff uh, is. So I'm going to be looking at that pretty hard. The FJ is nice. It's going to hold its value. Uh, but in all essence, I've had this for two years. I've put 30,000 miles on it. I got another four years I'm expecting out of this. So I'll put another, do the math, 30, 60,000 miles on it. That'll put me up around the 120,000 mile range, uh, which will still be low mileage in four years. It'll be 13 year old vehicle. Uh, so that's where I'm headed. I really appreciate those of y'all that have hung around and watched this whole 
long video. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Hit the thumbs up, either which way. And uh, hang tight. We got more videos coming up. All right. See ya.